The 25th year will be Schubert, which of course I'm thrilled about, but one of the things that occurs to me when we were talking about the format of concerts uh, and of mixing vocal music, string quartet, piano music, is we'll be recreating the one concert of Schubert's lifetime that he actually presented himself. Uh, it turned out to be on the first anniversary of Beethoven's death, mm -hmm. March 26, 1828. And what's fascinating is the way that he presented himself in line with the really the way that concert life was like in Vienna in the 1820s was exactly sort of barred programming. Absolutely. Of, of, it began with the first movement of a string quartet, not even the entire string quartet, mm -hmm. and then songs, and then a choral piece, and then the entire E-flat piano trio. And it really is a sort of uncanny um, that we'll be recreating his one concert that is exactly what we do and really almost no place else right. does. Um, so one of the things of, of this festival uh, will be really showing um, his self-representation. Mm -hmm. But we're also going to be exploring some of the areas that are somewhat unique to this figure of, of friendship, for example, right. his relationship to his time um, of artists and poets, not just musicians. Um, and. Uh, so maybe we could go through some of uh, what the concerts are going to well, I think, be. Well, I think, first of all, we chose Schubert for the 25th anniversary, I think, for several reasons. One is that we wanted to highlight Bard's patronage. That is to say that there's no accent. This is at Bard College. So we wanted to choose for the 25th anniversary to celebrate the festival um, a subject where the leading scholar is a member of our faculty, and that's yourself. So Schubert is a great subject because, as you say, he wrote a lot of music for his friends. And actually, in the festival, one of the things that attracts our regular concertgoers and people who become regular concertgoers is they get to know the artists. You know, they actually mm -hmm. they see them morning, noon, and night. If they don't see them on stage, the artists are coming to hear their colleagues play. Right. And so in intermission and getting a bite to eat, everybody's, you know... And the scholars. Right. And everybody's talking. It's one and of the terrific... The great thing, they're packed visit. in. And somebody will bring up something from the earlier weekend and the second weekend, you know, uh, remembered something that interested them and the, the, some either in a musical connection or a, something out of a pre-concert talk or a panel. So it's a, you build a community of listeners. So a number of the concerts this summer will be sort of in a Schubertiad right. format, what, what he did of actually in the home of people sitting around and mixtures of singing. We're, we're most used to the leader, of course, right. and, and he wrote over 600 of them and, and many of them still are well known. But there are domestic genres that have disappeared a bit uh, the part songs, usually for two tenors and two basses, we'll do a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Forehand piano music, dance music. Right. Uh, and then the other thing, of course, that's quite unusual in the history of, of really major composers uh, is, of course, he died so young at age right. 31. Uh, but that meant that the release and discovery of so much of his music, including the Unfinished Symphony and uh, so forth, it takes place over decades and decades more. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this has fascinating repercussions that we can look at and will look at, including unfinished works and an area that he very much wanted to succeed in and had quite little luck, which is dramatic music. The theater, theater, yes. theater. Right. And uh, so we'll be doing uh, both an early um, Singspiel of, of his and one of his two major operas mm -hmm. for, the, for the very final concert, and then an operetta about him by right. Franz von Suppe from 1864, which is really completely unknown today. We're producing... Totally. Now, in Schubert's case, he already was part of the 19th century, um, probably, as you say, as a song composer. Uh, but um, uh, he then emerged uh, gradually, posthumously, and got turned into somebody else. And the really funny part is that because there's so little and the music is so personal and became so popular, um, I probably think he's the most Hollywoodized composer in terms of film and legend. Well, we'll be showing some of them this summer and having panels about his biography and exploring his musical fingerprints. And while 
performing a great deal of his most yeah. familiar pieces, really putting that in the context of, for example, we'll be doing the Unfinished Symphony, but he wrote other Unfinished Symphonies uh, uh, that are never done uh, or wonderfully transformed in the case of really the notes he was working on probably when he was dying, uh, a, a final symphony that Luciano Berrio did a fantastic sort of reimagining which of, we're going to perform, which we'll yeah. be doing. So I think, uh, as always, we're going to be trying to be combining the familiar with the unfamiliar and, and turn, shifting our focus uh, or the, the way this uh, figure is viewed uh, by giving so much more context of the music around him and the music that he wrote. Uh, yeah, I think there's more unfamiliar music than you think. Uh, I think, you know, people coming to the festival will be very surprised to hear a lot of stuff that they don't know. And one of the things we can do in the festival, which we do very effectively, is to balance the continuity with the recognition of what's different between present and past. So. You know, most Americans, for example, uh, I've never thought really hard about um, what was urban life like in the 1820s. And I think that is going to be an interesting dimension of what audiences encounter when they come to the festival this year. Well, I think it'll be a, another terrific yes. festival and many more to come. Yes. <laughs>